This is how I would build a to-do list tracker in Excel by someone who gets paid to optimize processes. Let's get started. So in row nine, I would type out completed so that I can have a checkbox to indicate whether my task is completed or not. Task description. So I can describe what task needs to be completed. Category so that I can group together like tasks. Status if I want more complex tracking rather than just a checkbox. Uh, do date so I know when I need to complete my task by. Days left. Um, priority, mm, learning how to spell priority. And then last one is just notes for any kind of notes I want to take. And days left will be how many days I have to complete a certain task. So I'm going to bold these and certain values. I want to have a drop down list of things to select from. So I've got consistency in my data for when I do sorting and filtering. So this is going to be my list view. I want to create a look up list. Uh, and so what I want to include in that list is category status and priority. So I'm going to copy that over here. I'm just going to put some spacing in between it just so that it looks nice and, and formatted. And I am going to put some bounding boxes so that I know the range that I can specify my text in. Um, for when I do add my data validation. So under category, I can have things like there's stuff for home, um, kid one, kid two, uh, stuff for me, stuff for my partner. Status, I'm going to keep it simple, not started, uh, in progress, and completed. And of course, you can customize this to whatever values you want to have. So priority, going to keep it simple, high, medium, and low. Okay. So now going back to my list for category, for now, I'm just going to do it on a really small range. You can make this larger when you do your own example. But over here, I want to go to data and then data validation. I want to say, select my values from a list. And then I'm going to select my category, hit apply. And now when I click into here, I can see a drop down. I can specify home. I can specify if something's for my kids, that kind of stuff. When I do the exact same thing for status and I want to see the last row I did this for. So I'm actually going to create a bounding box here so that I have this. Um, I can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. So status, same thing. We're going to go to data, validation. I'm going to select list and pick my statuses here. Apply. So same thing. I can say this is not started. My task for kid one is in progress. Priority, the exact same thing. I'm nothing if repetitious. Uh, so highlight these and just say apply. We've got these things selected, which is lovely. Um, I'm going to make this make this low. So now I want to do some color coding. So based off the priority, I want to color code the value so that I can easily see anything that's a high priority that I haven't completed. So if I go back to home, I can go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and it's equal to. So anything equal to high, I want to be red. Uh, so I want to do the exact same thing for uh, medium. And then you can also hit the plus button here. Why I'm going the other route is because then I have to specify all the settings that are down over here. So if I just select this, it kind of is a bit of a shortcut for me. Equal to low, and I'm going to make that green. So now if I have high, medium, low, everything is color coded appropriately, which is handy. So next thing, I want to add check boxes over here to column A because I want an easy way to check off that I've completed a task. Um, maybe I don't want to constantly have to move a status to completed. How I would do this, I would, I'd say insert and then checkbox. 
And here you can see that you can check something off and you can say it's done, but it's not really obvious. If you check it off, I want it to be a lot more obvious that this is no longer a task. Like I've completed this task. So I'm going to add some conditional formatting here. So go back to home and then conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. Um, and then I'm going to say new rule for this one. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to use the formulas. I'm going to say equals to dollar sign uh, cell A10. So what this is specifying is to always look at column yeah. 10. And if this is equal to true, then I want this entire row to be grayed out. So I'm going to do some special formatting here. I want the text to be sure this color and I want the fill to be quite light. And then I want a strike through to really emphasize that I'm done this task. Um, so I'm going to, it's nice. It's at the top. I don't want it down below because then that color comes through. So I want to make sure this is up top. And as I check these on and off, it will color code my row for me accordingly. So I'm just going to copy in some fake data here so that we can do some calculations. Oh, and the one thing I forgot to specify is that, uh, so this is a bit of gibberish numbers. Um, you'll see why in a moment. Uh, so I want to put over here today's date. I want to use the formula today. And this way I can always see what today's date is. And this formula here, I'm going to just type it out so it's clear. I'm going to say, what is the due date of a task minus, actually press minus, today's date, so that I can figure out how many days left I have to complete a task. If I just drag this down, it's going to give me an error message because it's dragging these values down. So I want to use a dollar sign, dollar sign to force it to always use cell B7. Um, I'm going to actually just drag this down to the bottom of my table. Um, and if you don't want to see anything ugly like that, you can say if is blank. Um, I want this cell. If that's true, then I want nothing returned. And if it's false, then actually do a calculation. So now if I drag this down, there we go. This is nice and blank. Um, over here, I'm just going to specify that this is my to-do list tracker. So I'm going to merge these cells to do list tracker. Um, I don't like how that looks, so I'm going to do something like that. So it's nice and short over here. I want to document anything that's incomplete tasks. Um, incomplete tasks. This is completed tasks. And then I'm going to say do today, do um, next seven days and over do. So I'm not going to have anything that's overdue. That's a completed task that doesn't really make sense. But over here, it's going to give me just a nice, easy way to um, track and visibly see what do, what do I need to get done? What's my top priority for the day? And the reason I have, if I can show it, completed tasks is just for feel good so that I know what I've already finished. So to add a formula to figure out what is due today, I want to use count ifs. I want to select this range of dates and say anything that is equal to percent uh, today's date I want to show. And then I also want to ignore anything that's considered complete. So I'm going to adjust this to say anything looking at this range. Uh, I want to ignore anything or only include anything that's false. So it's showing one task today. So if I made this equal to uh, I don't, I'm just going to copy this one and say kid two and then equals today. 
Let's see. So now you can see that this counter increased to two. If I want to say the next seven days, I'm going to take the same formula and rather than say equal to, I want to say it's greater than or equal to. I'm going to copy this range. So I want anything equal to today or after today. And then I also want to look for anything that is in seven days from now. Um, and I need to change the formula. Or I want to adjust this symbol to be less than. So I want it to be greater than today, but less than seven days from now. There we go. So now we've got the four tasks that are due in the next seven days. And I want to see, is there anything overdue that I haven't completed? So this is really similar. And I'm going to say, give me anything where it's less than today and false. So you can see I've got three tasks overdue, but if I check something off, it gets dropped down and adjusts based on what I've indicated as completed. Um, and so for task completed, it's really similar. I just want to say, hey, give me the same criteria, but look for anything that's true. And same thing here, give me this criteria, but look for anything that is true. So everything's there right now, but let's pick this one. So it's indicating that, hey, this task is done. Um, and then if I select this one, it's indicating that the task that's due tomorrow is complete. So I'm going to stop talking and do a little bit of formatting to make this look a little bit nicer. And you guys can keep an eye out for what I'm doing. Look for part two of this video where we will take this list of to-do list tasks and we're going to transform it into this calendar view so that we have a nice visual way to identify what tasks need to be completed and what's coming up.